We want to welcome you again to another Haynes Ministries of Word and Do season. I'm Stephen Haynes. And I'm Susan Haynes. And I'm Joshua Stephen Haynes. And we're here with Jeannie Connolly. Hi. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to ask my wife to open up with a little word of prayer before we get started. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your presence in our lives and and we pray for uh, our listening audience that you would meet every need. We pray that your anointing would be upon our Bible study that we would receive from you, that you'd prepare our hearts, Lord, and, and help us to be enlightened to your understanding. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Uh, tonight we're going to be going over Romans chapter 14 and, and possibly the first six or seven verses in uh, chapter 17, but I want to start 15. off. Oh, I'm sorry, 15. I want to start off with uh, Romans 13, 8, our closing few verses from last week. And uh, it just says, This is Romans 13, 8. It says, Let no debt remain outstanding <clears throat> except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfillment of the law. <clears throat> and do this, understanding the present time, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself, yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And we commented pretty heavy on that last week. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I think it just kind of explains itself. But starting in Romans 14, it's talking about the weak and the strong. Uh, and I am reading from the New International Version, the NIV. It says, everybody say, except. 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 It says, accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. We're to accept one another, even if our faith is weak. Uh, we're going to find that if someone eats meat, we don't need to judge him. We're going to find if someone just only wants to eat vegetables, we're not going to judge them. We're going to find uh, that we're not to judge our brother and sister if their faith is weak or if their faith is not the same as ours. Amen? Amen. Anyway, it says, Accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. One man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. Uh, verse 3 says, The man who eats everything must not look down on him who does not, and the man who does not eat everything must not condemn the man who does, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. Does anyone have any comments on that? Um, well, of course, the, what, what the, part of what that's talking about in that day is we're still talking about Jews and um, Greeks here too for one thing but this still applies today with brothers and sisters in the Lord today because some people uh, nowadays some people feel like you know there's certain foods that you should eat and and shouldn't eat but then it was talking a lot of what it was talking about was like some of what it was talking about was food sacrificed to idols and the Jews would eat food that was sacrificed, like meat sacrificed to idols. Yeah. And and but then the Greeks who became Christians, um, they just considered that they there's some people, or maybe it's the Greeks and some that weren't Greeks, they just considered it 
we got to eat. And that's yeah. the only food around, and that's all I can afford. And I'm not, I don't believe in idols anyway, so why the, should that bother me? Yeah, exactly. You know, in fact, in Acts chapter 10, uh, you know, Cornelius is sending for Peter. And in Acts chapter 10, in verse 9, Peter has a vision. And anyway, I'm just going to read a few verses here. Okay. okay. It says, About noon the following day as they were on their journey and approaching the city, this was they, the servants of Cornelius. He had sent them to, to find Peter and ask him to come. And, and anyway, but Peter went up, to the, up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. I believe he had a vision. Uh, it says, He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles of the earth and the birds of the air. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, ki uh, get up, Peter kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. That just tells you right there that it doesn't matter what you eat. God, you know, we give thanks before we eat. Mm -hmm. uh, but if someone just wants to eat vegetables, then praise God, let them eat vegetables. And don't try to argue with them. <laughs> uh, now, personally, I eat meat and vegetables, but I'm not just going to stick to meat, and I'm not just going to stick to vegetables. Amen? Amen. I'm a meat and potato man. And there's, and also, like what you were talking about with Peter, um, the, the Jewish law was there were certain kinds of uh, creatures that they were not to ever eat. Right. And that's what, and that's how God was showing Peter that the gospel was going to be brought to the Gentiles also, and they considered the Gentiles unclean. And so, so it goes back to this, you know, uh, the Jews and uh, judging the Gentiles because what they were eating, and vice versa. But they're, but Peter's saying, okay, you know, if if you're with people that are Jews and they don't believe in eating that. And they've become Christ, you know, Jewish brethren because you know a lot of the first Jews, of course, were Christians, and there were still Christian Jews back then, and they still didn't want to eat unclean what they considered unclean meat, and they were condemned by it if they did that. And so Peter's, I mean, Paul's saying, okay, don't judge the Jews, and even today, like you're saying, you know, don't judge other people because of what they're eating and drinking when something's not clearly defined. By the word of God for us today, don't judge people by it. And we're going to go on and, and read some more. But but in verse 6, it does say, um, uh, have we gone to verse 6 yet? Not yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we'll I'll get to that in a minute okay. then. Yeah, we're on verse 5. <clears throat> it just says, one man considers... Uh, one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. Now some people celebrate Christmas. Most people do. Some people don't. Uh, some people celebrate Thanksgiving, but I'm sure there's some that don't. Uh, there's different holidays that many people celebrate, but there's some people that don't. You know, we shouldn't judge the ones that don't, and we certainly shouldn't judge the ones that do. You know, I know I celebrate Christmas, I celebrate Easter, I celebrate this, I celebrate that. Uh, I celebrate birthdays. Some people don't even think anything of their birthdays. You know, they think every day is just the same. And, uh, and that's okay. That doesn't mean they're off in sin anywhere. That's just and, what they want to believe. Uh, yes, yeah, as long as they're, you know, considering the Lord, that this yeah. is the day the Lord has made, like every day, you know, God has made. And some people feel like, well, we should consider the Lord every day. Yeah. And we shouldn't make one day above the other. Amen. And that doesn't mean that we're off in a cult or whatever, because we still believe the Word of God. It's just there's certain things 
that there's no black and white right. for us as Christians. And if there's no black and white, we need to be careful not to judge others for it. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Some people, uh, you know, consider Sunday. Of course, it's the Lord's Day, and I consider it the Lord's Day. But some people have a job where they have to have to work on Sunday. Yeah. And... And it's not, they, they may go to church Saturday night or Wednesday night and go ahead and work. You know, I'm not saying everyone should go forget about right. God and, and work instead of going to church. Uh, but, but some people think that's really bad to work on Sunday and they refuse to work ever on Sunday. And that's, that's why I'm going to go back up to verse 1. It says, except him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. Well, some of these are disputable matters. God doesn't want us to waste our time to argue about this and argue about that. Like Susie was talking about, <clears throat> there's some people who go to church on Saturday who thinks that is the day that you go to church. Uh, uh, some people argue with him, say, no, Sunday is the day that you go to church. But like Susie is saying, some people go on Saturday, some go on Sunday. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter to me when we go to church, but when we go, we're going to go and worship God. Amen? Amen. We just need to make sure we've set aside a day that we're going to worship God and or like and make sure we serve God every day, really. Yeah. Uh, we need to live every day like Jesus is coming that day. Like we need to live every day like the rapture is going to happen that day, that hour. Before that hour is up. Amen. Amen. And I want to remind you that no man knows the day or the hour. So if you hear someone saying, well, the, Lord, the rapture is going to be such and such time, just forget about it. But uh, anyway. That but was, no, the rapture could happen any time. No, the rapture could happen any time. Amen. Now, here we are in verse 7, Romans 14, 7. It says, for none of us lives to himself alone and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. That's, that's kind of a, <clears throat> a good feeling, a good thought to know that whether I live or whether I die, I belong to, to the Lord. If I live, I'm going to live in God's provision, His providence, His, His care, His protection. And if I die, then I'm going to live with him forever and forever and forever and forever. Amen. Amen. So it's a win-win situation. Either way, we win. Amen. If we belong to the Lord. And if you're watching uh, or watching an archive, uh, at the end of this Bible study, we're going to give you an opportunity to, to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Because I want everybody to go to heaven. Okay. Amen. Uh, verse 7, when it says, None of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself. Number one, we live for Jesus. We live for Jesus. And uh, we, in our lives, are should be examples to other people. And um, so we're not just off on an island all by itself. Right. I mean, you know, there's a little, a little saying that says, No man is an island. So what we do in front of other people affects them. And so, no, we shouldn't uh, judge people if they want to eat their herbs or they feel like uh, uh, it's condemnation for them to eat food sacrificed to idols or condemnation for them. Maybe they're a new believer. Maybe they're a brand new Christian and they don't like eating meat because they just don't believe in eating animals. Period. Maybe they have Amen. other reasons, you know, and maybe we don't fully agree with all of their reasons. But if they're a, a new baby in the Lord, let's not let's not uh, kill them because of our our liberty. Let's right. not. Maybe we should respect their wishes for a while. You know, maybe if you know you're inviting somebody to your house that really has a strong feeling against eating meat, maybe you should have a vegetarian meal for them. You know. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. I'm and beef jerky. Oh. <laughs> well, First you know, I mean, you sh I'm not yeah. saying we, you know, we, you know, should promote other religions or things like that. But sometimes there's a time when you should consider other people above yourself. Amen. Uh, 
and I have said it to feeded Bible scholars here in the Tulsa area, Tulsa, Oklahoma area. <clears throat> And here in America, we don't really condone <clears throat> Christians drinking beer. And anyway, he said he went to Germany and there was a bunch of Christian brothers sitting around the table drinking beer discussing the Bible. I mean, they weren't getting drunk or anything like that, but that's, that was their culture. That was their way. That You know, their faith allowed them to do that. And he, he said they gave him a beer and he took a few sips and, you know, smiled, said thank you. And that about all he drank was just a few sips. But... Anyway, if you go to Germany or, or wherever, and some people have wine with their meals, and like in maybe in Italy or whatever, we, we go over there, we shouldn't judge them, amen? Amen. It's not our place to judge them. But at the same time, don't you, like if you're a Christian and you believe it's okay to drink alcoholic beverages in moderation, don't do something that's going to hurt your brother or sister in the Lord. Right, because their faith may be weak. Because I remember years ago when I was a new Christian, I was a teenager, or I guess I was 18. Um, I, for a short time, dated another Christian man that was a spirit-filled Christian man, and I, I looked up to him because he was a more mature Christian, or I considered him a more mature Christian than me. Well, he just devastated me one day by uh, drinking champagne in front of me uh, and offered it to me and I was just you know because I was a baby Christian I considered that wrong I did not believe in drinking I still don't drink if you could go back but, would you drink that no okay I wouldn't I still don't drink and but it devastated me that that he was sitting there drinking in front of me and offering it to me and all that it just so we do need to be careful and consider one another's feelings. You know, I still don't drink. I just believe that God doesn't want me to. And I'm not saying I won't ever do like what you were saying if I'm in the country and that's all that's available to me because they, the, the water and stuff isn't safe to drink and that's all they drink at their table is maybe uh, wine or maybe beer. I'm not saying I never would. But I feel in my heart, God has told me not to Amen. drink. So that's something Amen. I choose not to do. And there are some Christians that think it's okay to drink, but they try to judge, they judge people that don't think it's okay. Yeah. And vice versa. And vice we shouldn't versa. do that. We shouldn't get on a, a bandwagon and hurt our brother and sister in the Lord Amen. because of our liberty or because of our bandwagon. We need to <clears throat> consider ourselves and consider the Lord. Amen. We need to yeah, pray for one another. Pray, pray for, for one another. another. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, and keep that, <coughs> let that extend to to how we treat each other. You know, we need to treat each other in love and uh, we need to yeah. pray for one another and have compassion one for another. Honor That's right. one another's faith. You know, if one faith is a little weaker, we'll honor that. And the one with a strong faith will don't do anything to upset the one with a weak faith. Amen. Something that I'd like to add to that is if you think that you're the one with the stronger faith, don't accuse someone else of having the weaker faith no. and then saying, I'm going to respect you. Because I right. can see how that yeah, would that's get like out of That's like slapping them in the face. Yeah. <laughs> well, I um, see you're weak in faith, so I guess so, I won't drink this time. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well go slap them up the side of the head. How you know? is your yeah. message, Bible son? Is Does it go down to verse 8 or uh, do you want me to do uh, read 1 through 8 <laughs> if you can one through, eight. through in the message by okay. welcome with open arms fellow believers who don't see things the way that you do and don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with even when it seems that they are strong on opinions but weak in the faith department remember they have their own history to deal with treat them gently for instance, a person who has been around for a while might well be convinced that he can eat anything on the table, while another with a different background might assume all Christians should be very vegetarians and eat accordingly. But since both are guests at Christ's table, wouldn't it be terribly rude if they fell to criticizing what the other ate and or didn't eat? God, after all, invited them both to the table. Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's welcome? If there are corrections to be made or manners to be learned, God can handle that without your help. 
Or say one person thinks that some days should be set aside as holy and another thinks that each day is pretty much like any other. There are good reasons either way, so each person is free to follow the convictions of conscience. What's important in all this is that if you keep a, a holy day, keep it for God's sake. If you eat meat, eat it to the glory of God and thank God for prime rib. If you're a vegetarian, eat vegetables to the glory of God and thank God for broccoli. None of us are permitted to insist on our own way in these matters. It's God we are answerable to, all the way from life to death and everything in between, and not each other. Uh, that's why Jesus lived and died and then lived again, so that he could be our master across the entire range of life and death and free us from petty tyrannies of each other. Amen. Now I'm going to start in verse 9, Romans 14, 9. And it says, For this very reason Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. That word judgment seat, the word judgment in the Greek is bema, B-E-M-A, beta, starts with beta, eta, mu, alpha, Bama, pronounced Bama, and it literally means reward seat. It literally means reward seat of Christ. This is for the Christians. It's for the Christians. <clears throat> anyway, we'll all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Uh, some of our works are going to be <laughs> burnt smooth up by fire. But some of them are going to come out, you know, gold, silver, and precious stones and, stuff, and such. In verse 13, it says, therefore, everybody say therefore. Therefore. The therefore is there because it means therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put a, any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. That's exactly what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you feel your faith is stronger, like Josh was saying, don't go around boasting that your faith is stronger and you're going to respect your your wish and not do this or do that. Just just be the man or woman of God you are who's mature in the faith. Amen. Amen. Don't put a stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. When it says brothers, that's talking about the brotherhood or saints or brothers and sisters. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 14 says, as one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself, but if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. If your brother is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Do not allow what you consider good to be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. Who wants to be pleasing to God? I do. I know I do. Does anyone have any comments on that? Well, that's just reiterating what we were talking about and, and what Jeannie was saying too, telling us we need to pray for one another. I Amen. mean, we need to love one another. And if we start judging other people by what they eat and drink and other areas that are gray, um, then we're not walking in love. You know, that takes me back to Romans thirteen eight. Let no debt remain outstanding except continuing... Uh, debt to love one another for he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law that's how we love that's how we uh, love our neighbor as ourself amen amen in verse uh, 19 Romans 14 19 <clears throat> it says let us therefore make every effort we need to make every effort that means we need to go out of our way which I haven't done through the years but maybe I can start. Make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a man to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. 
That's right. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother to fall. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> That's exactly what we've been talking about. That's right. In verse 22 it says, So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. That's what you got a home for. <laughs> you go home. When there's no brothers or sisters around him, <laughs> that's weak in the faith. Blessed is the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But the man who has doubts is condemned if he eats because <clears throat> his eating is not from faith and everything that does not come from faith is sin. I think that that's a pretty big one right there at the very end. Yeah. Um, the fact that if you eat something and you're not sure if that's something blessed by God, well, obviously we just learn that everything that is clean and pure because it comes from God, you just have to give thanks for it. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can go out and get drunk because earlier yeah. on in the chapter it clearly says, or even before that uh, in the end of the last chapter, yeah, it says not to drunkenness. partake in, in drunkenness. Yeah, and uh, so it doesn't say not to drink, but it does say don't drink around those who believe that it's wrong right. to drink. And I don't mean don't get drunk. I mean don't even take a sip because I I know people that are offended by drinking. Yeah, um, and they all have a history behind that offense. It's not just them trying to be judgmental or thinking that they're better. They I they have a I would say a painful background with that that certain area yeah, yeah. and if you do partake in that especially if they look up to you if you partake in that that just causes them to fall even harder yes it says earlier on that um, that uh, to his own master this is in verse 4 it says to his own master he stands or falls and he will stand this is the person that's weak in the faith and I wouldn't say weak I would just say they they believe that this is they believe wrong. Differently. They believe, believe differently, differently because there is no weak, there is no strong faith. Yes, some people have more faith in God than others, but we cannot measure the faith that we have. It's impossible for us to measure. Yes, we can look at somebody and say, well, I believe in this more strongly, but the moment you start to do that is the moment you start to put yourself above everyone else. Amen. And we were all created in God's image. We are all created equal. Um, so... I'm just saying that um, even though you could cause them to fall, God is able to make them stand, is what it says in verse 4. Amen. So even if they do fall, this isn't a call to be perfect consistently, and if you mess up once, then you're out of there. Yeah. It's just one of those things where God allows that. It gives them the strength to continue standing. Sometimes if you know somebody doesn't approve of what you're doing, you need to realize that it's... I'll you, okay, sorry, I, I, sorry. Uh, you need to realize that um, you're causing somebody to stumble and by causing yeah. them to stumble they, they they may not be like you some of us we fall we sin and we get right back up not in the sense that oh it's okay God forgave me it's not okay but you're quicker to give it to God just because and you don't want to make somebody else fall if they're not like you because we were all we are all equal in God's eyes and but we are all created differently in the sense that we all have our own gifts. We have our own things that that we're stronger in, our own strong yeah. points. Uh, but I, I really like what it says. It says, but the man who has doubts and is condemned if he eats because his eating is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. Yeah. If you don't believe in what you're doing, you're sinning. You're not yeah. doing what you're supposed to be doing. It, I, I guess doubt is a sin and if everything that does not come from faith is sin so everything yeah. that yeah. has doubt in it so I mean you can eat <clears throat> anything um, I wouldn't advise eating certain types of animals that might be poisonous uh, unless yeah. you do have a strong faith in which case go for it but I'm not responsible <laughs> yeah. for any harm that may come I just I'd like that I like to know what's considered sin and James it says to know the right thing to do and not do it is sin and right yeah. here it says to do anything that does not come from sin or from faith is sin well, I think I'm going to go start into Romans 15 and go halfway down, maybe to about verse 13. And uh, I think I think the Susie was pointing out that this kind of goes along with chapter 14. Susie, won't you read starting in 
verse 1 from the uh, uh, New King James Version there. Um, well, also, I wanted to make a oh, comment, okay. too, before we started that. But, um, you know, like Josh was saying, there's some people that have certain things in their background or things that happen in their life. It's why they abstain from drinking or, or certain things. or, right. or and, and that's why and we should respect that because God may have dealt with them differently than us. You know, like if someone has a, a history of alcoholism in their family, they may not want to ever take a drink. Amen. And and maybe the Lord Amen. dealt with them not to. Or maybe they've had a problem in the past <coughs> uh, with drinking. They should stay as far away from drinking. If, if someone's had a trouble with drinking or drugs, they should stay as far some, away as possible from some that. Some people think that drinking and carousing go together. And if they had a problem with either one, they shouldn't be doing the one or the other. That's mm. right. And, and so... You know, if you're trying to li live a Christian life. So let's, and, and there's other things. There's some people that uh, uh, believe women uh, should wear dresses all the time. Well, if someone has feels that conviction in their life, then that's what they should do. And that's we shouldn't judge should them, do. you know, and vice versa. You know, you shouldn't judge someone that's not wearing dresses if you feel like that's what, you know, because there's certain things sometimes that God tells individuals to do and not yeah. do. And he has his own reasons. Amen. And and so we shouldn't con feel that we have to condemn people when it's something that's not that's a gray area in the word. And okay, I'll start with chapter fifteen, verse one of Romans. Okay. We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good leading to edification for even christ did not please himself but as it is written the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me for whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope now may the god of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is this where we're going to end or we're no, going to do seven? Let's go down to 13. Okay. Therefore receive one another just as Christ <coughs> also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Christ Jesus has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as is written. For this reason, I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, laud him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him, the Gentiles shall, shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hear that. God wants us to abound in hope. He wants us to abound in hope. Uh, um, yes, son. I, I just love how it says in Isaiah, um, the root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, and him will the Gentiles hope. Um, Jesse was the father of King David, and through David's descendants comes Jesus. And that's the root of Jesse that it's referring yeah. to. He came through a royal bloodline, and... Um, I just I think that that's not the part that astounds me. The part that astounds me is the fact that it says in him will the Gentiles hope. We're Gentiles. We are not Jewish. Um, if I was Jewish, I'd still become a Gentile. I'd be Christian if I had a Jewish yeah. background. But uh, it says in him will the Gentiles hope. Well, before Christ came, only the Israelites, the Jews, had hope in God. They were God's chosen people. Amen. Only through Christ coming and dying for the entire world's sins, or the people in the world, 
um, do we have hope at all? If uh, this was, if we all lived back then before Jesus came, there'd be no hope for us. There'd be nothing that we could do because we weren't born into that. Yeah. But we all came from the same Creator. We all came from Adam. It was that's just how God decided to do things. That yeah. they were yeah. His chosen people, and so I just think that it's awesome that yeah. uh, we have hope in Christ. Amen. You know, in verse. 15 7 Romans 15 7 it says accept one another then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God we need to accept one another Christ accepted us just the way we are that's right he knew how we were going to be even before the foundations of the world and he wants us to accept our Christian brothers and sisters just as they are too and together we can grow in the faith amen amen together and here too it says don't become people pleasers. Amen. We're God pleasers. Right, we're God pleasers, Amen. number one. Not yeah. people Very pleasers. Amen. Mm-hmm. Right, Please. right. And when yes, and when we're talking That's about these different things, we're not talking about just becoming people pleasers, oh, but we're talking so. about, like you said, you please God first, and then you love one another. And you overlook people's, um, I'm not saying you let them go sin and say that's okay, but we overlook their falls. We overlook the little things that drive us nuts. You know, we pray God will help us to receive them, you know, because some of us have little idiosyncrasies that get under uh, other people's skins and all that. But God, when, when we're with our brothers and sisters in the Lord, whether they're weak, whether they're strong, whether they believe in eating meat or drinking and not drinking and all that, we're supposed to see Christ in them. Amen. That's what it boils the, down to. The way that I see it is whenever you start to maybe judge someone else or look down on someone else or, or maybe you're focusing on pleasing someone other than God then your your heart's not in the right spot you don't have the love of Christ because the way I see it is if you're pleasing God you shouldn't have to please people because the love of Christ is in you anything anybody else says will rub, will roll right off your back because Amen. usually we please people because we feel this need this desire within us that wants to be accepted that wants to get other people to just be happy with you but whenever you're pleasing God that stuff should fall People should be pleased to see that you're following God, and if they're not, Amen. then the love of Christ is not in them. And that's Amen. kind of harsh to say because some people aren't happy if if they're not being pleased, if someone's not pleasing them, and instead it seems like they're going after God because they want the attention. That's whenever you know that that person needs needs the love of Christ to be more evident in them. Because, I mean, you can be a Christian and have known the love of Christ and not feel it at some times. I mean... There are times whenever you're driving on the road and you may get mad at somebody and call them a name. It could be dumb or it, it could be stupid. It could be any kind of name that, that's not nice. That's more of an insult than it is a, a source of encouragement. And whenever you get into that, it doesn't mean that you don't have the love of Christ in you. It just means that you're choosing to let the worldly part of you overpower the the Holy Spirit that's within you. Because, yeah. I mean, except in Christ, we have the Holy Spirit within us to give us strength and wisdom and Amen. knowledge and everything that we do. And we should, and it says in uh, verse 5, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I believe that we should do everything to the glory of God. And my favorite thing in the entire world is during praise and worship, uh, just listen, closing my mouth maybe for a second so I can hear the mouths of others proclaiming the greatness of God all at the same time. Because to me, that's, yeah. a, that's a powerful feeling. Yeah. It's a powerful movement of people glorifying God. Amen. Uh, I think I'll close by reading verse 13 again from Romans 15. Can I say one, one yeah. more thing? Um, I can't find it right now, but in this in chapter 14 of Romans, whenever we were talking about not judging one another. Um, what does it say? Okay. Where, uh, where is it said, who are you to judge another man's servant? Uh, it says that in verse 4. Okay. 
Um, I, I would just like to go back to that real quickly. Okay. Um, it says, Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. And so I, I just, to me, that really stood out when I was studying this. Whenever we judge our brother and sister in the Lord, we're judging God's servant. I mean, we are. And who are we to judge another man's servant? Amen. It's not for us to do that. Amen. And And there's a scripture in Proverbs. I, mean, I tried to find it, but I couldn't for tonight. But there is a scripture in Proverbs that talks about that very thing, not judging another man's servant. <clears throat> and, and you can't do that. You know, I, I have a good friend of mine that was working somewhere one time. She hadn't been there very long. And, and this other person, this fellow employee, was making all kinds of mistakes and doing um, things wrong. I think they were counting change out wrong and all kinds of stuff. But they had worked there like 20 years. And, and my friend had just been there not very long. And she saw them making all these mistakes. And she brought it upon herself to go tell the owner. <laughs> Well, I didn't go over too well, you know. And so God is the same way. We're not to judge his servant. You know, we, we're his servant and our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord are his servants. That's not our job. That's God yeah. for God to do. If we see, I mean, if we see someone doing something that we don't agree with, but there's no cut uh, scripture that talks about that uh, we should pray for them like Jeannie said well go we, we don't judge them we pray for them or we give it to the Lord you know because God knows how to deal with them better than we do and and God can take care of it and maybe we're the one in the wrong anyway yeah. and God will show us that yeah. and so so we love one another and we don't judge one another we love one another yeah okay, well. I completely agree with that and I just wanted to add uh, it, that same verse it says to his own master he stands or falls and in the ESV it says um, it is before his own master that he stands or falls and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand I believe that's more in the lines of usually if somebody you think is weaker than you like you think you have the stronger faith and you see them falling you try to set them up right that's what you do by judging them you point it out to them you say oh you're doing this and that and you think that you're trying to help them stand up but it says right here that um it's before his master that he stands or falls and he will be upheld for the lord is able to make him stand you don't have to do anything god is able to make him stand you should not be going over there trying to mess with somebody that doesn't belong to you. I mean, we all belong to Christ. You know, we don't belong to each other. We should glorify God harmoniously together. Yeah. But you shouldn't be trying to help someone else stand because in doing so, you're probably making them stumble even more. Amen. I just wanted to close with uh, <clears throat> Romans fifteen thirteen from the <clears throat> NIV. It just says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, maybe you've been watching uh, watching and listening. If you're not watching live, maybe you're watching one of the archive, from out of the archives. Uh, we want to give our uh, viewers an opportunity to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know Jesus, and I'd like to ask my wife to uh, to pray, and uh, if you would, just listen to her a few moments and repeat what she has to say about getting saved. Susie. Oh, okay, as uh, Pastor Steve said, um, maybe if you never accepted the Lord before, this is your night. This is your opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He died on the cross in your place for your sins, and He rose again on the third day that you might be free from the bondage of sin. And if so if you believe what I've just said, leave this in your heart, then pray this prayer with me. Father God, Father, Father God, God. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank, Thank you for sending, sending Jesus. Jesus to die on the cross. To 
to die on the cross instead of me instead of me for my sins for my sins thank you god thank you god for raising jesus from the dead for raising jesus from the dead i confess my sins i confess my sins and ask jesus to come into my heart and ask jesus to come into my heart and forgive me of all of my sins and forgive me of all my sins amen amen if you pray that prayer you believe in your heart what you prayed then you are now a child of god you need to get in your bible and read it every day find a place of worship to come and worship god and and to hear his word preached because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god amen uh, i'd like to just leave uh do a little commercial before we leave um isn't it june 26th mm -hmm. June 26th, this this June, this right in a few weeks. A week after Father's Day. A week after Father's <laughs> Day, June 26th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, Hope Family Church is going to begin having Sunday services. And if you're watching an archive uh, in the next day or two, watching this uh, broadcast the next day or two, and you hear this, well, be sure and join us for Hope Family Church, uh, June 26, 2011, at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to start having church. We want you to be there. Holy Ghost is going to be there, and we want you to be there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, this is Pastor Steve Haynes with Haynes Ministries, and I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, until we meet again next week uh, for another Word in Due Season, have a good week, and may God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.